most scientists go through an, uh, conventional training. They go through 20 years of school. Most scientists will never hear anything about psychic phenomena in their academic training, except maybe they'll hear about it and say, well, you can dismiss that because it's been proven to be all delusion and fraud. And that's all they know. So if somebody then claims that there is evidence for this, they will, of course, think that that's nonsense because they went through this training and they never heard anything about it. Or they heard worse, that, it's, that there's something there, but it, you know, it was all denied. So this has led within an orthodox science, within mainstream science, to the notion that people who believe in psychic phenomena are stupid. And what they mean by that is that they are not trained in the principles of science to be able to understand why such phenomena can't be true. So I call this the stupidity hypothesis. It's a testable hypothesis because what it says is, if you look at the number of years of education that somebody has, there should be a negative correlation with the degree of belief in psychic phenomena. The more educated you are, the less you would believe. And this is the assertion that many skeptics will say. In fact, the National Science Foundation says this, essentially. They, they bemoan the fact of science education being so poor in the United States, and this is why people believe in lots of nonsense. Well, some of that is true. People are not very well educated in science, but they include in the mix psychic phenomena as an example of one of the crazy things that people believe because they're stupid. If you look at the actual data, you look at the survey data, you can, and you partition it by the number of years of education versus belief in things like ESP. It is not a negative correlation. And in fact, it's a significant positive correlation. What does that mean? That means that the more educated you are, the more likely you are going to believe in psychic phenomena. So this, it, the, in other words, you can test the stupidity hypothesis and it fails. And you do the same sort of analysis and you do surveys for college professors. How many, what percentage of college professors believe in things psychic? 60 to 70 percent. Well, they're not stupid. So the, the, the ignorance spin that is put on this is absolutely not true. So there needs to be other ways of understanding, well, then what are they believing in? Why do they believe in this stuff? Mainstream science says that it couldn't possibly exist, but it's based on a false premise that it couldn't exist. Uh, why do they believe? Most people believe in something even when science says it can't be so because of their own experience, their personal experience. And so you can kind of make a guess that people who are not very well educated can be deluded into, into believing things even though science says you shouldn't believe it, uh, because they, they don't have the critical thinking apparatus in order to figure out what might be coincidence and what might be wishful thinking and so on. But that is not the case when you have highly sophisticated psychologists, for example, or other kinds of scientists who spend their lives critically thinking about things. If you start denying your own experience, that's like one step in the nut house. You, you can't deny your own experience. So, Scientists, like, like many people, will, will become schizophrenic. They have personal, private beliefs that are developed because of their experience, but they don't talk about it in public. Because in public, at least within the academic world, you're not supposed to talk about it. And this is one of the few areas in academia where this taboo is not only strong, but has persisted for at least a century, probably more than a century. I know many, many academic colleagues. These are distinguished people in their fields, in psychology, cognitive neuroscience, the basic neurosciences, physics, and so on, who privately are very, very interested in these phenomena, like psi phenomena. Some of them are doing their own experiments. Some of them are getting successful results in their experiments. Well, why aren't we hearing about it? Because the culture in the academic world says you cannot talk about it. So we're living in the parable of the emperor's new clothes. It's something that everybody knows, but cannot speak about it. So just from a purely sociological point of view, this is so interesting. You have this, this completely schizophrenic split between experiences which happen repeatedly and have throughout time and to all kinds of people, including college professors. And then you have, you have to officially deny it. So 
because I've noticed in the last decade or so that the number of academics are, are, that are interested in these topics but have been quiet is getting larger and larger. And it's, it, I'm not exactly sure why. The times have changed. There's new openness to new ideas. Maybe because the, the, the idea of mind-body connections is no longer considered a lunatic fringe, but is mainstream, that people are more open to, the, to new ideas. So this is like a new ancient idea that now it's becoming not quite, you still can't quite be public about it, but the number of people has grown so there's a restlessness which is occurring. And I'm the lightning rod for it. I get, I, I get contacted by these people all the time and telling me their secret interest in it. And I say, well, did you know that so-and-so in the same department where you are is interested in this? And they say, really? I never knew. And then they start collaborating. And there's an invisible college that's beginning to, to evolve of its own accord. So I'm projecting that uh, within five or 10 years, perhaps, that the invisible college will grow so large and the pressure will be so large that the taboo will be addressed. I mean, even at this point, the taboo is so strong, you're not even supposed to talk about the taboo. It's like a highly secret government project where the fact of the existence of the project is secret. Well, the taboo is secret. No one's supposed to talk about it. Once the taboo is addressed, that's the first stage in making it dissolve. And at that point, you will find an enormous amount of interest in studying these things within mainstream science. And I'd, I've known this has been the case for at least 20 years. 20 years ago, I would give a talk to a, a group of uh, technical people and scientists. And, and being out of that culture, at the very beginning, I'll say something like, you know, they're all expectantly waiting to hear what I'm going to talk about. And I'll say, I know what you're thinking. And of course, I, they all laugh. Uh, and what you're, what you're thinking is, why am I talking to a scientific and technical audience about something which you only know from the entertainment world? Psychic phenomena, after all. And the reason I'm talking to you about it is because when you look around, you'll find that it's standing room only. And this is among scientists and technical people in a technical environment. Well, why is it standing room only? Because everybody's interested in it. Most people in a positive direction, some in a negative, but they're still interested. What other area of science do we know where there's enormous amount of interest and nobody doing anything about it? So I say at the end of the talk, if there was funding, there's federal funding, funding from your company, wherever it happens.